Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the December 2021 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how I made them and get a couple tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I stopped by to introduce the new sheet load of cards, December 2021. In that video, I showed you my first set and told you how you could download the file. Now, if you haven't seen that video yet and you want the download, once you're done here, I will have that video linked in the description box below and I call it the debut video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how I made that first set that I gave you a look at. And my team of collaborators will be joining me here on YouTube, over on Instagram, and on their blogs with their first set. I know that once you're done here, they would love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. All of their links are in the description box below for you to check out. If you're also inspired to play along, don't forget to show us your sheet load. You can do that here on YouTube, over on Instagram, or send in a card for the end of the month video. I do have all of the details in the Show Us Your Sheet Load Guidelines video, which is linked down below. And if you're going to share here on YouTube or over on Instagram, make sure to use the hashtags at the top of the printable. This month's sheet load, if you follow the supply list and the cutting guides, will yield you nine cards. So with just three pieces of 12 by 12 pattern paper, three pieces of cardstock for matting, and five pieces of cardstock for card bases, you're going to have nine quick and easy cards ready to go. Sheet load is always a great way to build up your own stash of cards to send out, but they also make great gift sets. So if you have a friend, a family member, a coworker who likes to send out notes, you can always make a set of these, package them up cute, and give them away. And with the upcoming holiday season, it's a great time to try that out. Let's go ahead and take a look at the main supplies I'm gonna be using today, and then we'll get started on the process. For my oval for my sentiment or image area, I got out a Spellbinder set. I have two sizes and I'm thinking one of these got lost, but I just use this size right here and it's almost exactly like the sketch. Now, you do not have to have an oval that is exactly two by two and three quarters. You can always use a circle if you have it or a different size oval, whatever fits your card and you own. You might just have to get out one more piece of cardstock though, or some scraps to cut all nine of the ovals. For my mats, I chose light pink cardstock and I got out three pieces of that. And for my pattern papers, I am using some pieces from My Mind's Eye Splendor line. I believe that I got these and a sticker sheet that you'll see here in just a minute as a scrapbook kit from Tuesday morning. I will be using all four pieces instead of the three that the printable calls for because I will actually be cutting my oval from this area right here that is out in the open. Here's a look at the other three pieces. I have kind of a busier pattern with lots of colors. One that's less colors and I love the text in the background. And then this pinstripe that will go with either of those pattern papers. The kit also came with this sheet of stickers and I will be using these to decorate my sentiment oval later. And speaking of sentiment, I'm not really sure right now what sentiment set I'm gonna use. So later on, as I add more products and tools, I will let you know what those are, but you can always leave any questions in that comment section below if I leave you with any. Let's get crafty. I'm going to start off today by doing quite a bit of cutting. Now I will mention some of the dimensions, but as always, they are on the printable, which is free for subscribers. 
For my pattern papers, they are all three going to get cut the same way. And because the columns add up left to right to 12 inches, you have to make sure you don't do what I call a generous cut, which is cutting just a little bit more than what you need. If your paper does have a direction, you'll want to make sure you know that before you take your first cut. Since my first pattern paper does, I do have to trim off the branding strip at the bottom so it fits in the trimmer. Once that has been trimmed off the bottom, I can rotate my paper and start cutting what I call my columns. They are listed on the printable, but the first one is five and a quarter, the next one is three and three quarters, and then the final leftover part should be three inches. Now here is where I want to explain a generous cut. Normally when I cut a dimension, I cut it to the right side of the marking on the ruler. So if I cut it five and a quarter, I would cut to the right side of that black line. But when I have something like this where everything adds up to 12, I cut just right to the left side of that line. That way I ensure when I get to that last piece, it is the three inches that I need. Once I have all three of my columns cut, I then cut each strip to the height given on the printable. And because we did not use generous cuts for the width, you will not want to use generous cuts for the height, just so all your borders with the cardstock later are nice and even. Since the second pattern paper didn't really have a direction that I had to pay attention to, I just went ahead and started cutting off my columns instead of starting by cutting off the branding strip. I cut the remaining two pieces in almost the same way. You'll notice here on my striped ones that some are vertical and some are horizontal. That's because when I was cutting my columns, I cut the B column to four inches wide instead of three and three quarters. So I did have to make some adjustment, but you'll see here this pattern paper does have a pattern on the back. So you could always look at that if when you end up making a mistake like this, your orientation would not be correct. But this is just another example of just try to make it work and we all make mistakes. And if you're wondering why some of the weird hand gestures on screen, like holding up one finger and waving them around, I was just thinking in my head at the time when I was doing the process that, you know, it doesn't really matter if some stripes are horizontal and vertical, sorry, not horizontal, horizontal and vertical, because none of these are going to go on the same card. Next up is cutting down the pink cardstock for my mats. And this is something that if you want to cut your ovals out of this piece of cardstock, you'll want to pay attention. Because you want that whole block at the bottom for your ovals, you won't want to cut columns first. What I did was cut the column for piece B at three and a quarters inches, and then the piece I had left over, I wanted enough at the top to cut piece A to its height, so I rotated it and cut it to six and three quarters inches tall. Then you'll see at the bottom, I have that big chunk for my ovals later, and I still have room at the top to cut down my three A pieces. Now, once again, if you don't want to use ovals or you're using something else, you wouldn't have to necessarily pay this close attention. I continued cutting the pink cardstock in the same way until all three pieces were cut down to the sizes needed. If you're following the cutting guides, your next step might be to cut your ovals from the cardstock, but since I will be using the pattern paper for my ovals, I went ahead and pre-cut this into strips, and then off camera, I'm gonna use that oval die cut and cut until I get nine ovals from the lined area of that pattern paper. Since most of these cards, if not all of them, will go to channel members who support me each month, I will be using the Tailored Expressions, Simple Strip Thanks, and the die that goes along with it. To match the pink on the pattern paper, I chose Gina K Designs Dusty Rose Ink. And the cool thing about this sentiment stamp is you set it up once, stamp it, and then you can do that one die cut and look at all those sentiments that you get. 
I wanted to make sure that I got a nice crisp impression for each of my sentiments, so I did ink it up and stamp it twice before bringing in the matching die. When you stamp something like this, you need to make sure you get those squares on the outer edge because when you go to line up your die, that's what you're gonna use to make sure that the cuts all look good. I am using some scotch blue removable tape to hold this in place. It holds the die while needed and then it peels off that cardstock without any damage and I can actually use it later on. I just wanted to stop here real quick with a suggestion. If you were going to make this set of sheet load of cards into a gift, what you could do at this time is put strips of foam tape on the back with the release paper still attached or some double-sided adhesive with release paper on the back and instead of choosing nine to go on the set of cards you're making you could give all of these to the recipient and they could make these for whatever they want so if they don't like the from the bottom of my heart sentiment they wouldn't necessarily have to use those but maybe the thank you for thinking of me would be great for a card that they needed now in case they don't need all thank you if you had other sets like this in different occasions like birthday or friendship then you could give them some other options for sentiments as well let's go ahead and get back to the process because this created more sentiments than all need for my nine cards today i went through and pulled out the nine that i thought would be best for channel members once i had those selected i put the remaining the leftovers in a special case that i got from tailored expressions to adhere these to the cards, I did want to use some foam tape, so I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the quarter inch width and added some strips to the back. My next step was to bring in the smaller pieces of pattern paper as well as those pink cardstock mats that I cut, and I went ahead and matted each of those on the corresponding size. Now while I work on that a little bit more, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Today's question is submitted by my sister Crafty Days. You might recognize her name from our Oh So Inspired Lives. She is also a channel member, so one of the perks she gets is to help me come up with questions and then I ask for input from them as well about videos. She and I would like to know, did you make any Black Friday crafty purchases? If so, what are you most excited about receiving? Now these could be Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday, Giving Tuesday. Let us know in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so we know you've answered and would like us to see it. I did take advantage of a couple sales last week, and I guess the one I'm most excited about getting is my order of reinkers from Gina K Designs. If you saw my Getting Inky with Reinkers video, you know that I recently borrowed some from my friend Danny, and I love playing with them so much that I wanted to get some of my own, and since I have Gina K Designs ink pads, those are the ones I went with. Once those were all matted, I then put together what I call my card kits. And what I do is go through and select the pieces that are gonna go on each card front. Laying it out here in front of me like this helps me to keep everything organized and ensures later on that I won't have two of the same patterns on a single card. Off camera, I cut and folded my card bases, and since the cutting guides would yield you 10, I will just use that extra for a project later. And since all the pattern papers are ready, I can start assembling the cards. I bring in one card kit at a time, add adhesive to the back of the pieces, and put those on the cards. Now for this first one, I went with the same layout that was shown on the sketch, but you'll see here that when I go to put together the second card, even though I don't do it, you can definitely move these pieces around, change the order that you adhere them down. For instance, instead of putting the small rectangle down second, you could adhere the square second and the rectangle on top of it. 
As I always say, sheet load is a great jumping off point for you and you are free to arrange these pieces how you want and make them your own and make them more pleasing for what you're using for your sentiments or your embellishments. Just have fun and get crafty. I continued adhering down the pattern paper pieces until all nine card fronts were decorated. And speaking of decorated, that is what I did next. I brought back in my oval pieces, my sentiments, and those die cut stickers. For this first card, I'm gonna do a single one for you. So I laid down my oval and chose a sentiment. Then I went and selected a sticker that would fit above it nicely. Now, because these are tacky on the back and I want them to stand off the card a little bit, I brought in my foam tape roll. This one's just a little bit bigger than what I used earlier. And to take the stickiness off the rest of the sticker, I brought in my embossing buddy and just tapped that powder around the sticky edge. Then I pulled that release paper and placed my flower onto the card front. Now for the remaining cards, I did it in more of an assembly line process. I adhered down all of the ovals to the cards, some I centered on the square, some I moved to the left or right, and then when all of those were in place, I selected my sticker embellishments, got those ready to go, and then selected a sentiment that would fit on the card front nicely. I finished decorating the rest of the cards off screen and here is a look for you at those cards with all of the sentiments and flowers and because you know my cards need a little bling I brought in some pink gems and added a few of those to each card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the December 2021 sheet load. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit all of my collaboration team linked in that description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.